welcome back to Talking Serpents. So today I gotta build a custom reptile enclosure for someone around the area, and I'm gonna be making it out of melanin. So I thought I would show everybody the differences, the pros and the cons to melanin reptile enclosures. All right, let's get to work. If you didn't know, melanin is heavy, and I'm going to be cutting this on my table saw like I always do. I always dread doing it because, like I said, it's heavy, so I'm gonna show you the struggle. So as you can see, it is a struggle city. Stephanie is not, uh, not a bodybuilder, so to speak. And uh, doing this alone would definitely be a nightmare. So I have a nice table saw blade. Oh, oh, there we go, so now it's focusing. I have a nice table saw blade that is proper for cutting this but it still leaves little bit, little bitty chips. And uh, yeah, they're not so easy. So having a melanin enclosure is cheaper, but it will not look um, more toward near, near perfect, I should say. Well, I had a slight change of plans uh, since you saw me cutting up that other huge piece of wood. It was another four by eight. Just cutting a little piece off of it. Um, figured while I was at it, might as well make another pile of wood, AKA another reptile enclosure. This one's gonna be four feet wide, two feet deep, and 18 inches tall. I'm sure someone local around me will really enjoy it. Um, so this will be like a public surface announcement. Announcement, sorry, I can't talk, I had too much coffee. <laughs> um, so I usually get a lot more business, people wanting enclosures from me around the winter time because people have them in tanks. And then uh, it gets a little cold and they're like, oh my God, and everybody freaks out and calls me and texts me, they need reptile enclosures. Like, like phones going off the hook every day. So just remember, winter time's coming and it will get cold, depending on where you live. But for the most part, you're gonna need a proper reptile enclosure to hold all the heat in. So, always prep and don't do what uh, most people do and uh, wait until the last moment because uh, it's probably not good for your reptile anyways. So, be prepared. Gotta turn that into a reptile enclosure. And there's a pile of wood over there. This is the one for my customer. Uh, I'm not gonna show you all the crazy parts that no one needs to know. Nope, nope, you don't need to know that. So I'm gonna build those and then I'll start showing you all the fine details that you do need to know for melanin enclosures. Okie dokie. Got both the uh, reptile enclosures all well, uh, all the structure is built. So now I'll jump into what is significantly different about melanin versus regular wood. So melanin is a coating on the top and the bottom, sometimes just one side, but in uh, this sense, I get it on both sides. So it's a white coating and it, uh, so it acts as like an interior and exterior um, paint, except obviously um, it's white. And uh, you can get it in black, but it's very rare to actually find a lumber mill that actually has that. It's also a bit more expensive as well. So melanin has the plastic coating on the outside, which protects it. And then the inside is particle board. And particle board is not uh, as strong as, uh, let's say, a plywood. I like using birch wood on all my other enclosures, especially my personal enclosures. Uh, it's quite a bit stronger, and it is half the weight of melanin, at least. At least. When you get melanin, you have all these edges that are just bare. And obviously that doesn't look very good, and if you got any moisture um, on this edge, uh, melanin tends to swell. It like, acts as a sponge, and it would just soak up uh, all that water, and uh, things wouldn't line up quite as well. It looked terrible, and you probably won't be very happy. To cover up this this edge, what you do is, uh, I buy this stuff at Home Depot. 
it looks like a company called Edgemate makes it. It is melanine edging. Obviously, it comes in white, it's like a 25 foot roll. And uh, here, here's the roll right here. And camera focus, there we go. There is adhesive on the back side, and the melanine coating is on the opposite side. So what you do is, no, I'm not ironing my, uh, my sweatshirt right now. You cut the strip out in the like proper length, and then you go over the melanine stripping very slowly. I will demonstrate it for you. And uh, yeah, you are melting the adhesive onto the wood and then you kind of roll over the edges. And it is fairly protected. Not as protected as if you would do a paint or a stain with a polyurethane on top. So it'd be quite a bit more protected than obviously keeping it raw. And it, uh, it looks a lot better. This is, all right, camera focus. There we go. Finished, and all the edges, the perimeter edges, have been finished on this side. And on this enclosure, it has not been done. Unprotected protected and obviously it looks one solid white color. So the time that you would spend um, painting the uh, the exterior, uh, you will be cutting little strips and ironing them on and it is quite a bit more time consuming than you might think if you've never done it. Uh, it's actually a little deceiving. It probably takes I'd say about an hour to an hour and a half to put on, yeah about an hour to put the melanine stripping on this enclosure and this one is a four foot wide two foot deep, two foot tall. Let me demonstrate for you. Start on one side, line it up. Firmly press with the iron. It feels so odd using an iron. You know, like, what? It just doesn't seem like the right tool, but it works good. Just a little bit big. And slowly glide across, melting the adhesive below the stripping, attaching it. Sometimes you could take your sleeve or something that is, uh, let me say not your hand, is, uh, does get really hot. So. You also don't want to have the iron on there too long because it will make it yellow. Um, yep, I've done that before and you have to peel it back off if you heat it back up. Don't want to do that. If you watch from underneath, you can kind of see it melt a bit. Kind of like spreads out the adhesive on the bottom. Nice even pressure. Okay. There, cut the length. press it down and then I like to go really lightly on the edges make sure it kind of rolls some of the adhesive off of the edge of the stripping also since melamine doesn't cut like perfectly straight lines uh, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, jagged edges here and there I'll, I'll try to find a little piece that has some edges which uh, shouldn't hard, should not be hard to find since it's melamine it kind of like fills some of those uh, little voids in with the uh, adhesive that comes on it. So this edge is done. Do that side and that side and that side. But I think you get the idea. A little time consuming. All right, this is definitely a jump into the future. I've been uh, just, uh, a, a little busy. Um, yeah, had some uh, DIY reptile enclosure kits go on back order and uh, some other custom orders come in so I had to uh, finish the melanie enclosure, put it inside, and then fill my whole garage up with uh, other do-it-yourself reptile enclosure kits and stuff like that. So, like I said, just a little bit busy, but no problem. So now I'm gonna show more pros and cons of the melanine reptile enclosure. So I'm going to take some wood out of uh, well, you'll see, I'm gonna torture test it. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. And then you can see the strength of particle board versus plywood. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes them a little bit stronger and then I'll go ahead and break them, of course, so you can see which one you would be uh, more inclined to trust for strength. So let's have some fun. All right, so here's my test. 
my first test anyway. So I have little strips of melanine, and like I said before, you have the white coating on top and the white coating on bottom, and then sandwiched in the middle is all this little tiny little bits of particle board. It's just little pieces of common wood compressed with glue. And then the plywood, this is birch wood to be specific. You have all the different layers, if you see them, little straight lines that are all sandwiched and glued all in one direction, which uh, makes it quite a bit more stronger and uh, is very light in comparison to melanin. So I'm going to do a strength test, a little hammer drop test. So I'm going to figure out maybe like a foot and a half high and uh, drop the hammer on it. Safety first. All right, let's start with the melanin. We'll go about Say about this high. Length of the hammer. Alright. Just blew through that thing like it was nothing. Alright, let's try it. Well, Birchwood. Alright. Right there. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, well. We already know that one failed. So let's go a little higher. Let's see what go. We'll go right here, like another six inches. All right. Okay, not bad. Well, I definitely know that uh, it takes impact quite a bit more. Let's try an impact test. This is three quarter inch melanine. All right. All right, now let's try the plywood. This is gonna hurt my hand. Well, it, it definitely takes a lot more impact. I don't even see. Oh, there's like hardly even a freaking dent in this thing. My hand still it freaking hurts. But uh, yeah, impact test is definitely better. Well, let's test. Test some strength. So we'll just, I'll put two of these together, why not? And I'll just impact, give them a good impact on the edge. That's easy. Pretty much, pretty much nothing. Really, really easy to break. And then, all right. So this is birch wood. I'll try a little harder on this one. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh. All right, so yeah, definitely can handle a little more impact. And uh, like I said, it's higher, but I do have some enclosures inside, so let's go check those out, and I will show you the weight difference. Here is a four foot wide, two foot deep, 18 inch high. It's one of the do-it-yourself reptile enclosure kits that I have on my website, talkingserpents.com. So if you are interested, they're on my website currently. Um, so this one is made of birch. Birch wood, I won't go into any more details than that. And this one is made out of melanine. Um, I don't ship these because they're uh, they're quite a bit heavier. Um, but this one is the same exact size, four feet wide, two feet deep, and 18 inches tall. And I have my scale out here, so I'm going to show you what this one weighs. I'm gonna take the glass out, because uh, so we won't even be adding the weight of glass. So I'll figure out how much this one weighs versus that one. And then uh, I'm sure you will be just a little bit surprised by uh, how heavy these are. Holy crap. No way. 94.3 pounds. I mean, it, I believe it, but that, that's a lot of weight. Melanine in this size, 94.3. Yeah. Could not do this for melanine. How much do you weigh? 45.2. That one, without glass as well, 45.2 pounds. This one, with 
pounds. And then this enclosure over here, let's see if it shows up, 45.2 times two. If you doubled the weight of this enclosure, the birchwood enclosure, it still wouldn't be as heavy as this melanin enclosure. 90.4 pounds. Yeah, you could literally have two enclosures that would be slightly less than the weight one birchwood enclosure. That is, uh, that's quite a bit of weight. It's also not very fun to move. All right, as of now, I can't really think of any more pros and cons, uh, but I'm sure I missed some, so if I did, put it in the comment section below, and then we could chat it up there. Obviously, I prefer birch enclosure over melanin. Well, I like, you know, obviously to stain mine and put different interiors in them, but not everybody's into that. Melanin might be perfect for you. Everybody's different. But uh, yeah, obviously, like I always say, good work isn't cheap and cheap work isn't good. Meaning you spend less and you get something that's not quite as good or you spend a little bit more and uh, get something that's quite a bit nicer. But that's okay, not everybody needs something super nice. I understand that. So this is definitely a great option. Yes, it's heavy, and uh, the edges don't look quite as nice as a birch wood. You can't make it into a bunch of different colors and such. Um, but it is cheaper. It already has a coating on the interior and exterior. Um, sure, you gotta put the melanin stripping on all the edges, but uh, with a little bit of time, probably like an hour, hour and a half for enclosure, it would be finished, and you put all the screw caps on as well. You don't have to. Some people don't put the melanin stripping on there. I would highly suggest do not follow their bad example. If you're into melanin, fits your budget, maybe you're, you're a do-it-yourself person as well, sure, go ahead, build a melanin enclosure. If you're in the local area and you want me to build one, sure, obviously I do that for my customers as well, but uh, there's always other options. Like I said, if you are interested in any of my do-it-yourself reptile enclosure kits, they are on my website, talkingserpents.com. All right, that's the end of this video. If you like the video, strike that like button. If you have any comments, post in the comment section below. Let me know if there's any pros and cons that I missed. Maybe have a really good story of uh, a really heavy melanin enclosure. I know I have a lot of people with good stories every time someone picks up one of my birchwood enclosures. Also, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.